pain modulation. So pain modulation, uh, there's, again, a lot of this will be repeat, but uh, it's worth going over again. There's three ways that we uh, modulate the pain. One through the sensory, and that's using the gate control theory and, and, and ascending inhibition. There's also the central biasing mechanism, noxious pain relief. Pain inhibits pain, so we're creating pain to inhibit the pain. This is a descending inhibition. And then endorphin release, motor pain control, and, and descending inhibition. So, again, just to briefly go over the gate control again, Melzack and Wall in 1965, and that's the body possesses overlapping pain control mechanisms. The substantia gelatinosa in the dorsal horn serves as a gate that can be opened and closed to pain sensory tracts. Normally the gate is open and the sensory input is passed through the substantia gelatinosa. When no receptors, either the A delta or the C fibers, are stimulated, the gate is closed and noxious stimulus is passed through. So when the no receptors detect pain, as in, again, if you bump your elbow, the noxious stimulus is passed through the substantia gelatinosa. And you can block that pain, it's painful stimuli at the substantia gelatinosum by providing a sensory in stimuli, so rubbing your elbow. And again, we can use uh, e-stem or uh, to create a tingling feeling or the uh, cold from the ice or even um, other modalities to stop that. There is a new model of the gate control theory and it's also believed that stimulation of sensory re receptors will release naturally occurring opiates, so painkillers. So these opiates inhibit the transmission of neurotransmitter substances at the cellular level of the dorsal horn and the pain is blocked at the nerve root level. So this new theory is kind of combining some of the, the gate theory and the other theories in that the, uh, the stimulation of the sensory receptors will also release uh, opiates. So again, some modalities that inhibit pain under the theory, cryotherapy, thermal therapy, electro electrical stimulation at a high frequency, even counter irritants such as the analgesic bombs such as oxygen and massage. You must have high frequency stimulation of the fibers and, and the pain modulation will be immediate. However, once it's only as sustained as long as the stimulus is on. So that stimulus is only working as long as you're rubbing that elmo, elbow or you're uh, providing that e stem. But as soon as you take that away, that gate opens back up or closes back up and now you're only getting the noxious stimulation. The advantages of the this type of e stem or uh, pain control is that it's not noxious, meaning it doesn't hurt. There's no muscle contractions, and it just it has a pleasant feeling. The central biasing theory, or the noxious pain relief theory, is that basically pain inhibits pain, and this is done through descending in inhibition. So, using a noxious stimulation of the C fibers, you activate portions of the midbrain. These endorphins, usually serotonin, are released from the midbrain into the descending tract of the spinal cord. The pain stimulations are then halted from relaying to the brain. So basically, the difference in this, when I say ascending or descending, uh, uh, the ascending tract or the descending tract is just basically where in the body the, s the stimulus is reaching. Um, in the central, in this, in the des descending inhibition, uh, what basically we're uh, we are in, uh, stimulating the CC fibers, and it's creating a reaction in the brain. So in return, so in in return, the brain is sending uh, some endorphins in reaction to that 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 stimulation. So we're causing the p the pain at the C fiber, in addition to the normal pain of whatever's wrong. That C fiber sends stimulation to the brain, the brain senses it, and in response to that releases endorphins into the brain, uh, into the bloodstream. And then those those endorphins uh, block the stimulators at the cellular level. With this you need a low frequency and a high intensity, so you, you don't want a lot of pulses per second, or you don't want, you want a very low hertz setting, and you want to turn it up as high as they can possibly stand it. 
So the type of modalities that inhibit under this theory is acupressure, and that's what I mean by that is just finding a trigger point or a, a, a trigger point in the muscle and just pressing down as hard as you can. Acupuncture, point stimulators, again, um, point stimulators are just uh, some ways that we can um, use the voltage and uh, reading in the voltage and find uh, the trigger points in the muscle and, that, and, and just overstimulate that muscle. The neural probe and the inner X5000 are all uh, are all examples of modalities. The low frequency, low wavelength, high intensity necessary. You need a low frequency and long wavelength, and high intensities are necessary to activate the C fibers. Many machines don't have a long enough wavelength. Some of the disadvantages to this is you have to cause pain to inhibit pain, and it's usually only used after you've tried all the other options. And the endorphin release model uh, is motor pain, and this is the motor pain control. And this is kind of going off of uh, you're using kind of movement, motor pain, uh, pain from the motor movement um, to create, to uh, stimulate the body into releasing those endorphins. So um, what you're doing is it's kind of the same theory as a runner's high. You're kind of reproducing that. And so the goal of the treatment is to enhance the production of endorphins. A, a delta fibers will stimulate the pituitary gland to release endogenous opiates into the blood for prolonged pain relief. The delta fibers are stimulated by noxious mechanical stimulation such as pi pinching, vibration, and prickling. The A delta fibers send messages via the spinal thalamic tract to activate the reticular formation and thus p the pituitary gland. This activation causes the production of endorphins and ACTH and adrenocorticotopic hormone these substances cause some pain cause pain relief endorphins have also been shown to have similar effects as in central biasing modulation so stimulation of afferent nerve fibers through stimulation that has the following characteristics a pulsed rhythmic motor stimulation low frequencies usually 2 to 7 hertz or pulses per second and long duration 20 to 40 minutes so basically what you're doing is you're going to set someone up for a long time, 20 to 30, or 20 to 40 minutes, and you want to set them up so that when you turn on the e, the e stem, what you're doing is you're making that muscle actually work, contract, rhythmically pumping, sort of like a pumping motion. And so they should have, you should see a visible muscle contraction, and what that does is it stimulates those, de, uh, those uh, delta fibers, and what they do is they um, sort of simulate like, going for a real long prolonged run like an eight mile jog and when you get back even though your muscles are kind of sore and tired and a little, and a little, a little uh, stiff you get that real euphoric feeling that's, that runner's high and that's what we're doing with this so some types of modalities that affect this are the electrical stimulation again a rhythmical low frequency motor stimulation and you won't usually use right away because you need the motor stimulation and when you have a fresh injury let's say you have a, a sore hamstring and it's fresh you don't want to use this right away because you are making that muscle contract so that would actually probably hurt the muscle more um, it does not take effect immediately but they do feel the effects for longer, for longer and, and a even after the stimulation has uh, ended 